if we start on time, we might be the first session starting on time, so I wonder whether we should give a couple of minutes to the people, but we have somebody who is waiting online uh, to speak, actually, Sally Costerton. So it's a little bit, um, I think it's 1.45 in where she is, which is a little bit cool, so I think um, without, without a further delay, uh, thank you everyone for coming to the ICANN Open Forum, the multi-stakeholder model driver for global services and uh, sustainable development goals. My name is Veni Markowski, I'm Head of Government Engagement for ICANN. And we have several speakers with us, but the room is, as you can see, is, you know, we are very open and close to each other. So if you have any questions, also online moderation is uh, provided by my colleague Vera. If there is any questions, you can uh, just ping me there and we'll introduce the questions. Um, so we, we will give the floor to uh, Tripti Sina, our chair of the board. We have also uh, later on uh, Danko, Leon and Edmond speaking, and we have Sally Costerton, our CEO and president and CEO who will be joining us uh, online. So Tripti, I think with that, uh, we can give you the, f you know, take the floor for your welcoming remarks. Okay, thank you, Benny. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to ICANN's Open Forum. It is a privilege to join you today to explore the role of the multi-stakeholder governance model in shaping the internet ecosystem over the last 25 years. The internet, as, it, as you know, is a dynamic and, ev and ever-evolving landscape, has woven itself into the fabric of our lives. It connects people, transcending borders and cultures, and bestows us with a wealth of knowledge and communication. But what is often hidden behind the seamless connectivity is the participation of thousands of stakeholders who work together to maintain a stable and reliable internet. So in today's discussion, we will delve into the multi-stakeholder model of go governance and internet governance and how, how it has played a pivotal role in creating our digital economy while contributing to the realization of the UN Sustain sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. Just a little bit slower for the translators to make sure that... Ah, okay. Thanks. So this model lies at the heart of everything ICANN does, shaping policy, implementing changes, and managing the unique identifiers that maintain the internet stability and interoperability. ICANN, or the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, is a nonprofit organization that coordinates these identifiers. Every time you go online, regardless of the surface uh, device you are using, the network you are connected to, or where you are in the world, you interact with the internet's unique identifier systems that are coordinated and managed by ICANN. For example, when you type a domain name, such as ICANN.org into your browser, ICANN ensures, in coordination with many others, that you end up at the correct website. We make that happen at a technical level. ICANN also coordinates policy development around the technical aspects of the internet. These policies are developed by a multi-stakeholder community, a rich tapestry of representatives from the private sector, governments, the technical community, civil society, and even individual internet users. Together, this community is committed to serving the best interests of the public not only the billions of users online currently, but those who are waiting to connect. Today, nearly every device that's connected to the internet runs on the same set of protocols and standards and uses the same identifier systems. By using this shared voluntary system, they are all able to communicate with each other, creating a vast interconnected network. At ICANN, we take seriously our responsibility to inform and collaborate with policymakers to ensure that their efforts to protect their communities do not unintentionally damage the internet's functionality. Furthermore, governments and intergovernmental organizations are encouraged to participate in ICANN's multi-stakeholder policy development process. Our governmental advisory committee, which advises the ICANN board on public policy issues, currently has 182 member governments and 38 observer organizations. The internet, as you know, knows no political or geographic boundaries. Keeping the internet running is a worldwide effort involving thousands of people with a shared goal to connect. As we delve into the workings of this multi-stakeholder model of intergovernance, it is essential to recognize that this approach is one of the most inclusive 
and democratic forms of decision-making ever devised. This approach produces strong results because everyone has a stake in the outcome. The multi-stakeholder model has allowed the internet and the digital economy to flourish. It has allowed the internet to function without fail for nearly 40 years, even as the number of users and traffic has exploded. This bottom-up inclusive model is not just an idea, it's a reality. So thank you for being part of this important conversation. Let us work together to further understand, appreciate, and contribute to the continued success of the multi-stakeholder model in ensuring a stable, reliable, and unified global internet that benefits everyone. Now I will turn it over to Sally Costerton, ICANN's interim president and CEO, to share how the multi-stakeholder model um, okay, I, and uh, community is creating a more inclusive internet. Sally, over to you. Thank you, Tripti. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good start. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. And once again, welcome everyone to ICANN's open forum. And whether you are participating here in person or online, I look forward to engaging in this discussion with you. Since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, ICANN has worked hard to ensure equitable participation in our meetings for both in-person and remote attendees. We continue to apply those lessons learned to ensure effective engagement with all our stakeholders on this hybrid model. Building on what Tripti said, I'd like to take a few minutes to delve a bit deeper into a couple of examples that demonstrate the power of the multi-stakeholder model that Tripti described in shaping our digital world. A pivotal moment that showcased the model's effectiveness took place seven years ago this month. In October 2016, oversight of the coordination and management of the domain name system, or DNS, was handed from the US government to the global internet community. It was a profound exercise in trust, collaboration, and consensus-driven decision-making. Through countless hours of dialogue and negotiation, stakeholders from all corners of the globe came together to ensure that the transition would be smooth and that the internet stability and security would remain uncompromised. This transition established ICANN as an independent global organization accountable to the world that exemplifies how collective efforts and shared responsibility drive positive change. In the seven years since, the global community has demonstrated that the, that the IANA stewardship transition was a resounding success, a testament to the multi-stakeholder model's ability to work in the best interests of the global internet community. It showed that when diverse voices collaborate with a common goal, we can achieve remarkable outcomes. More recently, the world was struck by the COVID-19 pandemic. The unprecedented crisis tested the internet in ways we could never have imagined. Overnight, the world turned to the internet for everything, for remote work, education, healthcare, and staying connected with loved ones. The internet's ability to scale up and provide essential connectivity during this crisis in a sustainable way was nothing short of remarkable. But what's even more noteworthy is how the multi-stakeholder model played a crucial role in ensuring that the internet continued to function seamlessly. Governance, governments, internet service providers, technology companies, and civil society organizations joined forces to keep the digital infrastructure running smoothly. They worked together to address challenges such as increased demand for bandwidth and ever-changing cybersecurity threats. Now, the multi-stakeholder ICANN community has turned its focus to creating a more multilingual inclusive internet. Everyone, regardless of their background, culture, language, or location, should be able to make full use of the internet. And ICANN is working to expand the DNS to support more languages and scripts. Many of the current users and most of the next billion users coming online are part of communities that speak and write in languages other than English. 
and scripts other than ASCII, true, local and global meaningful access to the internet can only be accomplished when all internet enabled applications, devices and systems work and accept, work with and accept all valid domain names and email addresses. As we work towards true digital inclusivity, let us remember that all the multi-stakeholder community, let us remember all that the multi-stakeholder community has achieved so far. Let us continue to embrace the multi-stakeholder model as a guiding principle in internet governance, ensuring that the internet remains a powerful force for good in the world. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to hearing your thoughts on these important topics. Thank, thank you, Sally, and thanks for being with us uh, given the late uh, or early rather time. Uh, but feel free, by the way, if you have any comments uh, when we start uh, the conversation um, to, to raise your hand or just uh, unmute yourself because I understand you're a co-host and you can do that and uh, intervene in our conversation. So I'm going to open the conversation with a couple of guiding questions, but guys who are here, feel free, you know, to again raise your hand. There are microphones enough in the room so you can, um, and I see familiar faces here, so you can uh, comment or ask questions. So I would, we would love to hear also your contributions on the, on the topic that we're discussing. So I spend most of my time at the United Nations, so the topic of the SDGs is near and dear to my heart, so um, I would rather start the conversation with uh, a question to you guys, the panelists, uh, as to what are the tenets of the multi-stakeholder approach to internet governance and why are they important to ensuring this open, secure and interoperable and resilient internet ecosystem that we have. So who would want to take the first? Uh, Leon? Oops. Thank you very much, Veni, and thank you everyone for, for being here with us. Uh, I think that, uh, as Benny was trying to say, we're trying to make this more as a dialogue rather than a monologue, so feel free to chime in and raise your hand and just uh, contribute to the conversation at any time. Uh, so I, I think the multi-stakeholder model is essential to uh, uh, not only internet governance, but I see it, you know, penetrating other real dreams of uh, of uh, society uh, nowadays. And uh, I think it's important because it's the place where everyone has a seat at the table. And not only a seat at the table, but a seat on a horizontal uh, structure, right? Rather than a, than a, than a top-down uh, model, it, uh, at least how it works in ICANN, uh, is, is on a bottom-up fashion, right? So uh, it, it guarantees and it ensures that every stakeholder and every interest group has a saying and, and is able to raise their voice and that voice is uh, taken into account. Now, we often confuse being taken into account with producing the outcome that we wished uh, uh, that, that it was produced by raising our voices. Now, that's definitely not how any model works, I guess. Uh, and the multi-stakeholder model is, is not an exception. Uh, but, but I think what's important is that everyone is heard. Everyone is, uh, again, sat at the table and able to uh, voice their thoughts, voice their interests. And uh, if, uh, you know, the arguments are so, that your point of view prevails, then that is one of the wonderful things that the multi-stakeholder model uh, has, that by consensus, it fosters this uh, uh, interaction between stakeholders that sometimes may have, you know, very opposite points of views and very opposite interests. Nevertheless, through dialogue and through these conversations, we find common grounds that enable us to take action and to build policies and agreements that make the internet work how it works. And, 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 and I think it's uh, uh, one of the principles that we should continue to uphold and foster uh, 
for the next generations to, to, to learn and to improve, because of course the model is not perfect, right? So we have room for improvement f within the model. And I think that's essential to what we do here in the IGF, right? To try to find those areas of opportunity in which we can improve the multi-stakeholder model and try to then go back to our communities and implement those uh, improvements to uh, strengthen and to uh, make the multi-stakeholder model more efficient. So uh, that's uh, my initial contribution, Benny, and uh, of course, happy to uh, hear other thoughts. Thanks, Leon. Uh, what you're saying about the fact that everyone is heard is very important because indeed in the multi-stakeholder uh, universe and at the IGF, it is the case. And at ICANN, it is the case. Anybody can come to the microphone, take the floor and speak equally with the others. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Danko, did you want to say something? Um, yes, thank you, Benny. Um, Danko, you have for the record. So um, I think Leon has very nicely outlined how the model works. Uh, but also we are here at the IGF to celebrate the success of the internet in contributing to the, to the humanity, to the strategic uh, sustainable development goals that UN has. And uh, in discussing that we are uh, looking also at the model, but uh, I, I, I'm a re I was originally techie, so I would uh, like to uh, comment a bit uh, why uh, the technical community is important part of the medicine stakeholder model. So we heard in the triptys and Sally's opening remarks some very important words like interoperability, uh, voluntarily system, uh, open standards and everything. So I would like us to remind us that uh, Basically, the technical layer of the internet is uh, on top of the world telecommunication network that now often includes mobile telephony. Uh, but uh, this technical layer is actually based on the, those very open standards and on accepting uh, what is defining the internet. And this is IPv4, IPv6, and the, the DNS system. And the key to, to success of the system is acceptance of this voluntarily uh, defined addresses of the root server system that actually everyone wants to use because everyone is there. So the power of the network that is happening is something that is attracting the users. So the uh, the importance of the internet in today's lives is not coming from some sort of the top-down approach, but is coming from the uh, interest of the end users to actually use this network we have. So uh, I think this shows that the uh, open, uh, uh, liberal and voluntarily approach taken on by the technical community is uh, very much contributing to the success of the whole model. So this is, uh, in my opinion, one of the reasons why the model works. And now, of course, in the multi-stakeholder way, uh, there is a very important role of the uh, other stakeholders, governments uh, uh, caring for the public interest, uh, uh, in their democratic processes, um, academia, obviously civil society and, uh, and businesses. So we are all together in this and in exercising the model as, as Leon commented, uh, it works and we celebrate that here. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to add something to uh, what Danko and uh, Leon just said. Fundamentally, when uh, technology is um, created, invented and developed, it's not done in isolation, and it's done for a reason. They're, they're created for enablement. There's a form and function to it. So you essentially have to bring multiple uh, stakeholders to the table because no one is working here in isolation because then it serves no purpose. So typically technologies, it's a technical community develops a technology to enable a user community, and then around that you need to uh, wrap policies and so forth so that they implement it fairly and abide by prevailing law, so on and so forth. And technology in this, in the internet in particular, of course, stimulates econ the economy and businesses and so forth. So we're all sort of interconnected. So let's not forget the fundamental premise that we don't work in isolation. Thanks, uh, Edmond, you? 
Yeah, uh, Edmund Chung here. Happy to add uh, a little bit of uh, my perspective. I think um, we, I love ICANN, and uh, it's very important. I, I, you know, I grew up with ICANN and almost, but we're here to celebrate the multi-stakeholder model, not just ICANN. ICANN is one of many successful multi-stakeholder models for internet governance. Uh, IGF here, uh, the multi-stakeholder advisory group, the MAG of the IGF is another one. Uh, the IETF, the uh, RRRs use a different model, um, but they are all successful uh, multi-stakeholder models for the global internet, and that's what makes it work. I think that's a very important part. Um, it's the global internet governance ecosystem uh, that that really you know makes makes it tick. Because uh, I think both Tripti and Sally earlier mentioned that really every click on the internet touches the DNS, touches the IP addressing system, and uh, ICANN plays a role in maintaining the unique identifiers. But these identifiers are developed by the uh, IETF and also maintained by by the RIRs as well. So it is working together that 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 makes uh, the the global internet governance system work. Um, so the uh, uh, another thing that um, Sally touched on that I want to to add is the internationalized domain names. Those who know me know that uh, that's a. a, a a topic of, of passion, um, but that has been a topic of passion for, for 25 years. But 25 years ago, um, I you know went to ICANN and the door was completely open and allowed me to really pick up the mic and start speaking. That goes to Leon's point about uh, being able to raise a voice um, for issues that, that, that are important because I do believe that a, a fully multilingual internet is important and it is a foundation towards digital inclusion, which brings me to the topic of SDGs. Um, it's the sustainable development goals that is really important because the internet is supporting the, the, the achievement of these goals. And, um, and if you look at uh, 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 IDNs, for example, the acceptance, the universal acceptance of the multilingual internet needs other stakeholders as well. Um, and it's not just ICANN, it's not even just the internet governance ecosystem. We need other uh, stakeholders, more of the governments, more of the academia, more of the industry and civil society around the world to make this work. So that's, um, you know, in my mind, what is, uh, I guess, beautiful about this, uh, this model. And um, Venny started the, the open the discussion by, you know, saying, what, what are some of the tenants? Well, multi-stakeholder model is, of course, one of them, but there is a little bit more. So what is in the multi-stakeholder model is also important, and I will, I, you know, I will highlight two of them that I believe are, are important tenants. One is the uh, bottom-up agenda setting. Um, and that's what, you know, ICANN I is about. That's what 25 years ago I was able to step into the mic and, you know, uh, and, and speak about. That's what the, um, you know, IGF uh, here uh, embraces as well, uh, the bottom-up agenda setting, setting of the, 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 the program, the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the MAG and, and the workshops. The other thing is uh, consensus-based uh, and rough consensus. And I think uh, both Leon and, and Danko mentioned it, not necessarily you know, always be on the side of the consensus. You have, sometimes you would be on the side of the rough, right? For the first 10 years, I have been struggling to get anyone being interested in IDNs to, you know, and it took time for the technology and policy to develop. Um, so, you know, that's, those two things are, are equally important, I think, as part of the uh, uh, ecosystem. So finally, I wanted to touch on one thing. Um, there are attacks to, to the system. There are attacks to ICANN. There are attacks to this uh, global multi-stakeholder model. Um, and for example, that it's being slow, that you know, things are, aren't getting done. I think it's the, uh, you know, the, the, the time it takes to, to develop a, a global consensus on global policies need time. But that doesn't mean there are not situations that you know almost borders into filibustering right i mean there are those cases and that's why we need to continue to continue to improve is it fully democratic no is it a, a representative democra democracy no but it is a more deliberative it is a more liquid uh, kind of democracy but 
we need to continuously improve it. Um, and you know, uh, at the uh, GNSO at ICANN, um, you would hear that the policy development process is now in 3.0. What that means is that uh, over the last you know, 20 years, it has been updated three times. So you know, that's the uh, an important part of uh, the, the multi-stakeholder model, I think. And finally, I want to say um, I very much believe that uh, a noisy ICANN is a healthy ICANN. That being said, for those who want to challenge this system, and those who want to you know, really uh, sort of extinguish this uh, open and bottom-up and consensus-based approach, we also need to develop protection mechanisms, and I think ICANN has developed some of it. Uh, and then I think uh, also the internet institutions uh, are going through processes to, to improve that because we uh, need these inoculation mechanisms to built into it so that the multi-stakeholder model can continue to thrive. So for those who want to come and challenge, I would challenge them to, to come and participate and change ICANN, but also be warned that we do have these inoculation mechanisms to repel those who intend to, you know, to, to kill the multi-stakeholder bottom-up uh, uh, consensus-based mode. So, you know, I guess this is what defines uh, ICANN in my mind uh, and why I love it and, and the internet e governance ecosystem has really proven its uh, resilience and, and value to humanity and you know, let's build it better. Thanks, thanks a lot. I don't know, Sally, if you, uh, uh, if you wanna uh, step in a little bit on that question, or if not, I have another one for you, but let me see what you think. Uh, I'm happy to take a slide. Uh, why don't we go to the next question, Penny? Um, unless anybody, I mean, there, I think there, there is. You, there is a question guide. in the room, oh. yeah. One yeah can you just I'm, introduce yourself? Yes, I'm uh, Varun Dhanapala from Sri Lanka, Government of Sri Lanka, and one time GAC alternate member. Um, so we, uh, uh, just to add to the colleagues, so there are a lot of uh, uh, argument of this model, multi-stakeholder model, and all these things. I, I was actually new to this ICANN business. My colleague, uh, Jayanta Fernando, introduced me, and then I went for an orientation session in Kathmandu. Then only I realized what it really is and engage with various stakeholders, but we, and we, we, we could build trust in this model. Uh, so there is a, there I attended a couple of sessions, one of the AGMs uh, in uh, maybe Montreal or Barcelona, and there are some some arguments uh, whether it is, uh, uh, whether there's a competition between uh, IGF and ICANN, uh, and I, I, I see it rather a, a, a complementary rather than competitive. So there's a lot of, give and take things from, from, from the state-driven or multi-stakeholder-driven approaches. So that's what I got. And I also, having a diplomat hat in New York, uh, I think we could host one of the uh, events uh, for, by, for ICANN by the Sri Lanka Commission in New York uh, for various nation states to, to give some light on what ICANN is doing in, uh, in, in New York. So, so I think that when it compares to many of the infrastructure, I think the internet has a wide outreach and there should be a, a real uh, strength should, should be harm, harnessed through through the, all these aspects. That's my comment and, and, and uh, to this. thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, so Sally, we were talking, uh, I think Edmund mentioned about the resiliency and the, inter the uh, how the service is working. So the DNS is providing uninterrupted service uh, which illustrates its reliability and uh, connectivity. How do you think the multi-stakeholder model contributed to maintaining this level of resiliency? And do you think this model actually is the one that helped the uh, internet? Thank you, Benny. Um, yes, is the short answer to your to the last part of your question. But let me explain a little bit about how how I think that it, that works. Well. Um, I think probably everybody maybe in this room understands this, but I think it, it, it merits repeating that it is not ICANN, part of ICANN's mission is to serve the global public interest. So the, the and the maintenance, the, the, the maintenance, the mandate to ensure the stable, secure and resilient and open DNS is how we do that. That is that is what we what we are actually delivering to the Internet users of the world. And you may say, well, why does that matter? Well, 
because every time any of us go online, whatever device you're using, you are, or whatever type of network you're connected to, or wherever you are in the world, you're going to touch something that originates from ICANN. And those that takes the form of the unique identifiers, particularly the domain name system identifiers that enable internet users to connect to each other. So at its simplest level, if you type ICANN.org into a browser, that system ensures that you can end up on the right site. And we make that work at a technical level. Do it in coordination with partners in, our, in the technical ecosystem. And we are not a political organization. So it I can, it is different groups of people from many diverse communities, as many people have referred to already this morning, performing that mission and doing it using a bottom-up process that uses consensus. And what that means is that when those policies are developed, in my experience at ICANN, and I think what ICANN has brought to the world in, in the last 25 years, it's our 25th anniversary this year, is sustainable policy because it has the hands of so many people over it. The consensus model is so critical because diversity means people come to ICANN and they don't agree. They may have come from many different points of view in the, in the analog world where they have different ways of doing things. But when it comes to making the policy and coordinating the identifiers that deliver this service to the world, this critical service that keeps the internet open and functioning and always on, they do it using this consensus model where you come into ICANN and you agree that you will find a way forward and that policy will then have the, the stamp of agreement and approval and support of the, of the multi-stakeholder community that represents the world's internet users at ICANN. And that is, as, as Edmund said, and he's right, sometimes that process can take quite a long time because to get people to agree to something that is sustainable and that works and that contribute to that critical infrastructure that we all rely on so much, you can't rush these things. They have to work. They have to work technically. And they have to work between all the stakeholders that use the internet. And in order to do that, we have to do we have to do one thing that maybe we haven't talked about yet today, but I want to stress it. And that is we have to build trust. And trust is built between people, one-to-one, -one, structures, as in organizational groups, organizations, countries, governments. And we all have to have that climate of trust, that ability to trust that we are going to do what we said we were going to do every second, every minute, every day, every hour wherever internet users are in the world. And the power of the internet comes from, it's the fact that it is a single interoperable system, which is accessible globally and locally, such that one of the, that great strength that we deliver that all the time can sometimes be challenging because it looks so easy. It can look to people that don't understand how it works, like it's just there. It's just always there, if you like, like a magic trick. But the reality is, is as, as Tripti said in her comments, that to focus on that part of, of in the internet, we need an internet governance structure as we work so closely today with the, with the MAG, with the IGF, and have done for the whole of the period of this, the time ICANN has been in existence, that the aspects of internet governance around content are outside our remit. So when we are working, we're working around our mission around the governance of, of, uh, of specifically the technical infrastructure layer. And I think that level of focus has been an incredibly important part of ICANN's ability to deliver that success over the years. And finally, I just wanted to say is that the, the one of the key elements we have to focus on, and I've been very involved in this in the time I've been working in this, in this uh, organization, we have to keep bringing new people in. The world is changing constantly. The internet is an increasingly important element and aspect and driver of that change. And in order to do that, we have to keep widening the net. We need to keep bringing new users into ICANN and we need to help them with capacity development tools and with working together to come into our world, like Edmund said, to show up, to feel welcome, uh, to feel heard, to feel equal. 
um, to feel empowered so that they can make meaningful contributions. I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Oh, very helpful. Thank you. I, before I, I see a couple of hands, but I would just want to make sure if somebody... Okay. Oh, Ed, Edmund wants... Oh, you know. Oh, go, go ahead. Sebastian was first, I think. Can you... Yeah, there is a microphone, but it's okay. All right. Steve Del Bianco with... I know, you can argue who is going to first. Steve Del Bianco with NetChoice, and we're halfway through this session, and uh, thus far the audience to which the message has been directed would be an audience of multi-stakeholders who don't really have any experience with ICANN. And to that extent, it's been normative and aspirational about how welcome it is to, to have a voice. I think that's appropriate to bring people into the consideration of trying ICANN. But at least half of our audience at an IGF, the 17th IGF, are people that have been working within ICANN, as I have for 20 years. That audience realizes that having a voice is not the same thing as having influence. And that audience might regard with some skepticism the ease with which having a voice affects outcomes. We actually have a good story to tell to that second audience. And our story would be how business, government, and civil society if they do more than exercise a voice, if they actually show up and participate, can, over time, begin to nudge and change policies. Uh, giving examples for, uh, that will affect the thinking that will go on, the debate will, that will go on in governments of the General Assembly over the next two years. Some of that audience experienced ICANN, and we need to remind them how governments, and through the GAC, have a special form of influence at ICANN, how we engineered their special role through the transition, how governments affect the way ICANN moves and has a huge role on the new GTLD program. Civil society, we want to remind them that over a decade of effort, they did have a significant nudge to the way ICANN handled the publication of who is data and the new policies that emerge. And in the business community, uh, the story's a little more muddled because different parts of the business community see ICANN in, in a different way. But all are able to influence policy, but only by participation. I really believe you oversell, you oversell the value of, oh, having a voice, giving a speech and an open microphone. That is, gonna, that is not going to ring true and effective for the audience that will decide the degree to which governments will accommodate ICANN's role in the vote the General Assembly takes in less than two years. For those of you who are wondering what this vo vote is in two years, it's the WSIS Plus 20 review, uh, which many sessions here actually have touched on that. Sebastian. Thank you, Sebastian Bachelet. Um, I wanted to uh, come back to a um, few positive things and, and maybe some less positive on, on ICANN. The first is that, um, yes, it is participation. And ICANN, it's the only multi-stakeholder organization who support uh, participation to uh, some of the people. I will just take one example. During the pandemic, uh, I can decide to help uh, the people to be connected to internet, to participate to the uh, meeting of ICANN uh, in, in, in some country where it was expensive, difficult, uh, um, and there are many other uh, example, I don't want to uh, take too long on that, but, but uh, for me, it's uh, one of the, um, it's the only organization doing that. Therefore, it's important to, to, to put that on the table. Uh, I, I, am, I, I understand that you are um, happy with what ICANN is doing, and we are happy with what ICANN is doing, but I, I feel that uh, um, uh, we can bring new people, yes, but we need also old timers. And, and we can't say one and not the other. The diversity is important. We can't have uh, people just, uh, okay, let's have everybody out and, and put new people. We, we need to have this uh, uh, diversity. It's also important to um, continue to have more and more diversity of uh, age, diversity of language, uh, uh, background and so on and so forth. But I, I really feel that after 25 years and, and more than 20 years of the last real reorganization of ICANN, it's time to uh, sit down and to think about that. Yes, I know there are pressing issues. The next round of TLD, uh, the AirDAP, the, and, and so on and so forth. But 
if we, if we don't sit down now, and I say now, to discuss how we can evolve ICANN to shorten the time of, the, of um, decision. Yes, we need time, but maybe we don't need so much time. Who is? 20 years, more than 20 years we are discussing on that. Um, it's it's sometime we need to find a way to have a, um, a decision making, maybe a little bit different. Yes, maybe it will be to take out to somebody's as uh, a uh, as a final decision, maybe to uh, rebalance the things was done after the uh, transition. But uh, if we don't sit down now, uh, I am um, um, I, 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 in trouble for the for the future. Yes, we are doing very good things, and yes, I can is essential, and the way I can is working. It's very good, but we can do better. Thank, Thank you. you. To address those Steve's uh, comments, uh, you're absolutely right that it's one thing to say we are open and you know anyone, but participation is important. Uh, one thing that is coming out of um, literally like last week, I'm already lost what day is today, is that um, with regards to the governments, because I know you, you understand the importance of them participating and I can not just having a voice, is that there will be a high level governmental meeting in Rwanda uh, on June 9th, and we've already uh, used the opportunity, you know, in our meetings here with government officials to invite them, and there are some commitments already of people to come. There will be some official announcement coming at the ICANN Hamburg meeting, but it's important, we, as important as the other stakeholders' participation, or maybe even more so because of the uh, process that you mentioned, the WISIS Plus 20, and the Global Digital Compact, which is next year. So we are not happy about the fact that, you know, it's an open microphone, anybody can speak, but we are happy that governments actually, we see now with Rwanda taking the lead, you know, to host a high-level governmental meeting, and with the conversations that we had here, and the bilaterals that uh, I have in the last uh, several months, there is, there is, I would say, a new commitment by governments to participate, not just to have the right to participate. So we'll see, you know, they make promises, we'll see how it goes. Do we have any questions online or no? Uh, I don't know if Sally, do you have any comments? Um, thank you, Benny. I, I, I absolutely agree with what Steve and, and Sebastian said about participation, uh, meaningful participation, and that requires an, an empowered stakeholders who are equipped with the right skills and knowledge and confidence. So people skills, individual skills, as well as the um, the knowledge that they need, the subject matter, the knowledge that they need to contribute. Because Steve's right, um, the purpose is to, is to create sustainable policy and to have an influence on that and to make sure that it's done uh, through the voices of many and not few. Thanks, Sally. We have several comments here. Go ahead, John. Uh, thanks. Uh, Jonathan Zuck um, from the Innovators Network Foundation, and I'm currently serve as the chair of the ALAC, which is the part of the ICANN community that endeavors to represent the interests of individual end users. But, but just speaking for myself and talking about ICANN generally, it's interesting what Sebastian said, that it's, we're good, but we could be better. And I suspect that no matter what we do, that will always be the description of ICANN, right? Uh, there's that song, per imperfectly perfect, or perfectly imperfect, or whatever it is, right? And that's, that's going to be the answer. When Jordan Carter yesterday asked people to raise their hand if he thought that internet governance is perfect. I, I raised my hand. He didn't see me, thankfully, because it might have led to an extended conversation. But uh, th the truth of the matter is, it doesn't mean that you, if you have a perfect system, you're going to have perfect outcomes or anything like that. It just means that you have a system that has the capacity to evolve, that has the capacity to, to deal with change, et cetera. But one thing I feel like I've been talking about for about 20 years that I think is a challenge, much more so than the structure of ICANN, is, is the ability to involve people periodically. Because there's a lot of people out there in the sort of internet community that have specific areas of expertise, but don't have a general interest in devoting their life to the work of ICANN. And we sort of create this binary that says, OK, you can come participate. And as Steve says, you can influence things. And Steve's managed to influence things with just participating for 20 years uh, in, in the ICANN process. And I think we really need to find a way to, and, and this was part of the GNSO's efforts with PDP 3.0, 
was to find a way to make the efforts more granular so that I'm asking smaller questions, I'm packaging them in a way that people that have domain expertise can participate for the duration of that small conversation and go back to their regular life. I mean, we don't want twice as many people, twice as many lifers that I can, but we want more voices when they matter, when they count and when that expertise can be brought to bear. And I think that's something we should really focus on doing is helping people with periodic participation. Thanks. I think, so. I mean, Tripti has a, a short comment. Um, thank you, Jonathan. S uh, thank you, Sebastian. I just wanted to remind everyone this is not an ICANN meeting. <laughs> 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 and we're, we're <laughs> point well taken. But this is about the multi-stakeholder model and how we can sharpen that model and contribute towards the United Nations SDGs and so forth. So just, just to remind everyone, this is not an ICANN meeting, but I'm glad that you're interchanging it, getting it confused with IGF and multi-stakeholder and ICANN. So at least it means that we're on solid footing when it comes to multi-stakeholderism. Uh, thanks, Tripti. I think Edmund, you, uh, who is first? I can quickly, because I think it adds on to what Tripti says, uh, said. Uh, uh, I think this is a great demonstration of um, a, a noisy ICANN that I think is a healthy ICANN. <laughs> so, um, but I, I did want to highlight one of the things that, that uh, yes, I agree, the, the evolution of the system is, is very important. Um, but one of the things that, that I want to highlight on the resilience, it is this thing, um, this type of argument that, that, that supports the resilience of the governance system as well, uh, and not counting on full agreement. That's the, the, the beauty of rough consensus, right? Uh, but in terms of rough consensus, there's also a nugget where we do agree. We agree enough to continue to work together and not go out and do something else. And I think that is equally important. Um, and that is the, 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 the nugget of, of uh, rough consensus, that that's what maintains one internet unfragmented. And then, you know, that's, uh, that's the one thing that I wanted to add. Uh, my name is Werner Staub. I'm also part of the, that half of the audience who is attending ICANN meetings on a regular basis. <laughs> and in the context of how we should organize the multi-stakeholder process of ICANN, we can actually look back on 20 years of experience and see successes and one enormous failure. And that one enormous failure is the fact that if you have this pyramid of multi-stakeholderism focusing on the top, which is the ICANN itself, you know, the, its, 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 uh, its governance structure, it fails to interact with other processes that produce useful things that would actually be very much necessary for the community that I can suppose to serve. And that community is not the domain holders. That community is the end users of the internet. And specifically, I can give a couple of examples of other processes. They're even kind of not so represented in, in this IGF, but they're really key to it. One of them is the CA browser forum. We have a lack of interaction with that organization, which is critical for, um, uh, for most of the stuff that affect the users of what I can ultimately output. Secondly, we have the Financial Stability Board, which finally took action about identification of legal entities worldwide. And compare that to ICANN's conclusion that it was unable to distinguish effectively between organizations and natural persons. It's a bigger belief that we had that result, simply because we're looking for a solution inside of this pyramid, when actually the solution comes from, um, uh, um, uh, from somewhere else. And finally, we've got another example, which is the identity um, forums. You know, there's a, number of, there's a number of initiatives around there, the Decentralized Identity Foundation and so on. All these, they would need some interaction, but we cannot organize this you know, with just some of the mm -hmm. stakeholders going there. It needs some interaction from the top of ICANN as well. Okay, thank you. Once again, um, just a response to your comment. You're talking, using ICANN as an example again, uh, but the takeaway from your comment is that regardless of what multi-stakeholder model we use, whether it's for the, United, for the IGF or for ICANN or any other body, let's make sure that we look outside of our own system. And uh, good point, well taken, thank you. And thanks, and I, I want to bring Sally again in the conversation because I think it goes along with a couple of the comments we, 
uh, we heard. So my next question is uh, how to ensure that this multi-stakeholder approach is inclusive yet representative, which is something that Steve was talking about, and particularly of uh, underrepresented groups and regions, and what is the role of capacity building that, uh, and how I can is engaging to uh, expand uh, and to, to bring new people. So, Sally, do you want to comment on that? Thanks, Fanny. Yes, um, it's essential uh, and right, as, as Tripti said, not just within ICANN, but right across the internet uh, ecosystem. Um, we've, done, we've done an enormous amount of um, work on bringing in newcomers of all different types to ICANN. Now, what we discovered early on, and I've been at ICANN about 11 years, and during this time we've discovered this, and I know that our colleagues at ISOC and in the, and in the RIRs and right across the, the system have the same challenge, that, as Jonathan said, the first thing is you have to get people interested. And that means they have to understand why what ICANN does affects them. People will not give up hundreds and hundreds of hours of their own time. It's a volunteer community to do something, however important me, we may think it is, until they understand why they think it's important. And so that's a, that's a critical hurdle that we have to get over as an internet community, not just as an ICANN community. And one of the things we have to do to, to do that effectively, and this is an incredibly important part of the role of the IGF, I think, is to raise awareness of how the internet actually works and how those how people can come and be part of that and why it matters and and how they have an influence and as the as those 10 years have gone on there's been more and more interest in how the internet works more and more interest in the internet itself which is no surprise as the as the users have grown so very much and that means then we also have to bring people in and say here's what you need to know now, some people come to ICANN and they know they very well understand the content, but they may not have the, 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 the personal skills. They may come from um, environments where they're not trained uh, in, in the personal uh, confidence skills and the time management skills, chairing meetings, participating in meetings and so forth. And the work of drafting and editing that goes into policy making, which we see as, again, not just not just at ICANN, but in, in many other uh, groups that are involved in this. So, the capacity building, what we mean is, and what usually my definition of that would be is, we're giving people a skill so that they, they can stand on their own feet. This is sort of the teacher man to fish or the teacher woman to fish idea. So much of the capacity building we do at ICANN around the world is about working with groups of people to help them to learn for themselves the skills that they need to, to use that energy and ambition and excitement that they have to be part of it in a meaningful way. So they are not just talking at a microphone, they are participating in that policy making process. And we have to do that in multiple languages, we have to do it in multiple time zones, and we have to do it with different groups of, of participants. So what um, students might need, uh, engineering students might need, for example, uh, in Asia Pacific, might be very different from what a new GAC rep might need in, Latin Amer in South America or Latin America. So we do lots of different kinds of training and capacity building. We create a lot of different content in lots of different languages. And some of that capacity building is very hands-on, particularly our technical training. So when people are putting in new infrastructure in their, or in their countries and their organizations, we do everything we can to help them to do that, to make sure that they understand how to, how to put in those things like uh, DNSSEC, for example, security for the DNS, they can do it effectively and they have the confidence to do that moving forward. Thanks, Sally Keith. You're uh, giving you. priority uh, here. Th thank you very much, Benny, and hi, everybody. Keith Drazik. Uh, I work for VeriSign. We are the registry operator for the .com and .net top-level domains. We operate two of the uh, Internet's root servers, and we perform the root zone maintainer function under a contract with ICANN. Um, and that may be well-known information to some of the ICANners in the room, but I'm sort of uh, introducing myself in the company for those who may be following online, uh, may be watching the recording later. Um, I want to take this conversation perhaps up a level and back to the focus on ICANN's role uh, and the ICANN multi-stakeholder community's role in supporting its mission, its technical coordination mission of the IANA functions, 
uh, as well as in support of the SDGs. I think as we talk about this session, uh, the way that it was teed up, uh, it's you know important to note that ICANN has a very important role at the technical layer of the internet. It has a very important multi-stakeholder engagement in support of the development of policies that impact that technical layer of the internet. And as we look at the SDGs, uh, there, there is no one that is you know, a direct um, recipient of something specific that is coming out of the ICANN process. But fundamentally, what ICANN does in the coordination of that technical layer and of the IANA functions, specifically the coordination of domain names, of IP addresses, of protocols that come out of the IETF, is that what we do in a predictable manner in the ICANN space, it creates stability, security, and resiliency for that technical layer uh, that enables everything else to function in a predictable way. For the work that needs to take place to deliver on the sustainable de uh, development goals, uh, it, it all in our interconnected world relies on the predictable, stable, secure, and resilient operation of the DNS. And I think it's just critical to recognize that ICANN's mission is a narrow one. By necessity, ICANN does it very well. Um, VeriSign has been uh, pr delivering on our DNS uptime for ComNet and the root servers that we operate 100% uptime for more than 26 years. We are able to do that because of the policies and because of the predictability that exists in the ICANN space in the management of the IANA functions. Our ability to do that and other registries and registrars and the service operators, the RIRs, we are able to do that because of that predictable nature. But it's really important to note that policies do need to evolve. Policies do need to change. Um, attackers on the, the DNS are getting more sophisticated. They are evolving. We need to evolve our policies accordingly. Um, and there's probably another, you know, a, a range of more options or examples that I could provide. But just, you know, to summarize, I think um, we have very good engagement in a multi-stakeholder way in the ICANN space. Multi-stakeholder consensus building is really about compromise. At the end of the day, consensus building, bottom-up consensus building in a multi-stakeholder fashion is about compromising. But it needs to be done carefully, and it needs to be done to ensure that predictability and secure, stable, resilient operation of the networks. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. This could have been actually a good fine, final <laughs> statement <laughs> for the meeting. But we still have time, and we have people who raise their hands. So first is Danko, and then Leon. Thank you, Kit. I think this is a great introduction also to what I wanted to say. So by celebrating the success of internet here, probably we're talking so much about ICANN also because, well, it's a lot of ICANners here, but we're also celebrating 25th anniversary of ICANN here, and I think this is part of this success story for the whole internet. So inside the ICANN ecosystem, we are coordinating those policies that enable this mid-layer to function and to be the fundamental for all the services in content and everything, why the users are there. But also, uh, as Sally explained, it is our role to engage and to uh, explain the technical consequences of possible legislations that are coming. So in these discussions in the IGF, I think it's very important that you contribute uh, because we are uh, walking towards the Global Digital Compact. We are walking towards Voices Plus 20. And for all of this technical community and uh, things that are coordinating in the multi-stakeholder model, well, through ICANN and through IGF and through others, uh, it is important that we understand what are the consequences of the possible uh, legislative processes and initiatives that are happening also in other fora and uh, give our best uh, help uh, assessment uh, expert expertise to uh, be able to, for this uh, great uh, internet to continue for next 25 and 25 and more years after that, and obviously to evolve to serve the needs of the uh, end users of the, the, the people of the world and uh, businesses. So I think this is very good. 
explanation how actually the things work and it will continue to be helpful. Thank you. So um, just uh, as, as Tripti was reminding us that this, that this is not an, an ICANN meeting, I'd like to take the conversation a little bit out of the realm of, of the ICANN world and, and try to remind us uh, how the multi-stakeholder model and what it produces actually has been successful in uh, uh, for, uh, forwarding or, or going, going forward or progressing uh, uh, at least two of the SDGs. And I'm gonna center in SDG four, which is quality education, and SDG 16, which deals with justice. And we could see the results of how the multi-stakeholder model uh, delivered uh, in, 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 in progressing these two goals during the pandemic, right? If it hadn't been because of the products made out of the multi-stakeholder model, children, a lot of children around the world, of course, uh, didn't have the benefits of, of having continuous education during the pandemic, that's, that's for sure. But those who were able to connect, those who had connectivity, they were able to continue having their lessons taught. They were able to continue learning and that is another challenge of the multi-stakeholder model, to connect the next users that are still not connected. So this is an effort that only, and at least in my mind, only through a multi-stakeholder model of doing things we will be able to achieve. And that will also progress on the SDGs of uh, 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 you know, uh, equity, et cetera, et cetera. And in terms of justice, I know that this might not apply to all legal systems around the world, but at least I can tell you my experience being a practicing lawyer in Mexico. Uh, we've had legislation that established electronic means for filing, for uh, uh, litigating, et cetera, et cetera, for years. But they were never implemented because we didn't need them. And as soon as the pandemic hit us, then all of a sudden the courts the, uh, 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 the, the, the different uh, offices in government, et cetera, et cetera, they implemented this legislation that had been dormant for years, and we were able to continue litigating, we were able to continue filing uh, uh, all types of, uh, of, of, of affairs in front of, uh, of, of government offices because of the products that we produce in this multi-stakeholder model. Not only within ICANN, again, uh, 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 through the different allies and, and the different bodies that conform the wider internet community, right? And, and I think one lesson that, that I'd like to uh, uh, convey or, or, or to share with those decision makers that might be listening to us is that we don't necessarily need to legislate the internet because it al it's, it's already regulated, right? Because regulation regulates conduct. It doesn't regulate means or media. So whatever we do in our physical world, it already has an equivalent conduct in the digital world. So whatever, we, whatever legislation we apply to the physical world, we can port that to the digital world. Of course, there might be gaps that we need to uh, uh, you know, look at, but we should look at them in a very careful way and by all means, through a multi-stakeholder approach because that will ensure that whatever legislation is crafted will take into account the interests of those who will be affected by, by those legislation. So again, uh, I, I think Porting this multi-stakeholder model not only to the internet community but uh, to a larger model like the uh, representative democracy and turning it into a participative democracy would be the ultimate uh, goal for us to to prove that the multi-stakeholder model is, is is fruitful. Thanks, uh, Vera. I understand there are some comments online if you want to read them. Yes, thank you, Vani. Um, can you hear me? Thank you. 
Thank you, Vani. You can hear me now. Yeah. Uh, so we have several comments in the chat, as well as a question which was answered in the chat, but I'd still like to read it out loud. Um, first, Desiree Milo Milosevic uh, commented, I would like to highlight a really great recent development at ICANN in terms of diversity. ICANN has two women at the helm of ICANN, the board chair and the interim CEO, and many diverse members of the ICANN community in leadership positions. And there was a question for Morgan Rockwell. Is there a transparent report on how governments and military and intelligence agencies requested ICANN to interfere in internet traffic, IP designation, or any policy choices? Which was answered by Michaela Nalon in the chat. ICANN published the letters they received and he provided the link. So for anyone who would like to see um, the link, please go to the Zoom room in the chat. And finally, an observation from our board member, Edman Chung. Uh, there's one specific SDG, 9.1, develop quality, reliable and sustainable and resilient infrastructure, including regional and transborder infrastructure to support economic development and human well-being with a focus on affordable and equitable access for all. And that was it for now. Thank you, Vera. Uh, that kind of brings me, the whole conversation here brings me to the point where I want to uh, skip a couple of the uh, questions I was having in mind, but go to the, uh, to, to the point that Steve was mentioning, which is the WSIS plus 20 process, and to see, uh, like in the next <coughs> two, three years, there are international and multilateral processes that have relation to ICANN's mission. They're happening at the UN, they're happening at the ITU, uh, they may be happening at the European Union level with different, uh, there are elections next year and different legislation. So I was wondering whether maybe, Sally, because we don't see you here in the room, but I can see a little screen with you there, so on, on our screen. So maybe do you want to take it from here and say, how do you see ICANN's role in the next couple of years vis-a-vis -vis those international intergovernmental processes that in some of them we cannot participate because they are closed only for governments. And in others they try to open them you know, with stakeholder uh, consultations and stuff like that. And to give you some background, uh, two days ago I believe in one of the sessions, uh, Jordan Carton I believe from Alder said that uh, uh, it's enough with the consultation, we want to be involved. Uh, now within the UN General Assembly we cannot be involved because the rules of procedure do not allow us to be involved, so consultation is the only path forward. But what do you think about these processes internationally and intergovernmentally that might impact uh, ICANN's mission? Uh, thank you, Vinny. Yes, it's an extremely uh, critical topic for, uh, for ICANN, for the world and for the internet um, as we go forward into the next, the next, two, the next two years of, of this discussion. And um, we are about to have our uh, next meeting uh, in Hamburg, um, our AGM, um, which will take place in a couple of weeks time. And I know from having seen the agenda and talked to many stakeholders and, uh, that we will have a lot of discussion on this exact question you're asking. Uh, so I, first thing I would say is I think we need to raise awareness of the importance of the discussion inside ICANN. Although it is not an ICANN process, clearly it is, an, it is a process in which ICANN is very affected and is very involved. So everybody that participates in ICANN needs to increase their awareness about what it is, why it matters, um, and what they can do and what we should do as organizations and groups to, to contribute. Um, it revolves around two fundamental objectives in terms of our position, I would say. Um, the primary objective is to uphold the multi-stakeholder model of internet governance that was created 20 years ago. And I, I think there is a, certainly my view, and, and I think the view of, of, of many people in our ecosystem is that it is that multi-stakeholder model, that process that we've discussed a lot this morning in this discussion, that has delivered the success that we see from the internet today, which Leon referred to, many other people referred to the outcomes of what the internet has been able to deliver. And that extraordinary model at the centre of it that was created 20 years ago has been probably one of the most important contributory factors that has enabled that to happen. So maintaining that as we move forward with a dramatically expanded internet, as I said earlier on, a 
and Edmund referred to of, of, of many new participants with different languages, different scripts, different needs to participate, but that model needs to stay at the heart of it. And to achieve that objective, we're dedicated to raising awareness, not just inside ICANN, but also awareness amongst the member states that will discuss this uh, and all stakeholders by whom they will, who will also participate and who will also be very influential onto the member states um, that, that are involved. And that means sharing our knowledge about how the internet works, um, the consequences of unintended regulation, some of the topics we've talked about this morning. And going back to, to something Steve referred to earlier, the, uh, and we have an ex GAC member in the room, I know, the role of the Government Advisory Committee is such an important part of the way that ICANN works. It's an, a very unusual uh, setup. It's extraordinarily, I think, uh, important part of ICANN and making sure that the GAC, the individual GAC members and the GAC as a group um, are fully equipped and fully, fully empowered to participate in that discussion and that we're maximizing the knowledge and access and relationships that the GAC members who come to ICANN have within their own countries and their own governments to improve, to, to increase the understanding of those governments uh, in these critical issues. The final thing I'd say is that um, we have two specific, uh, two aims for WSIS 20. Firstly, to increase the awareness of the uh, of global digital cooperation, the GDC, as you mentioned already, Benny, and the review. And the second is, as I said earlier, to draw attention to the key issues within that review that have the potential to adversely affect the internet and adversely affect ICANN's ability to deliver its mission in the successful way that it has for the last 25 years. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sally. Um, actually, on, on that point, um, with regards to the WSIS plus 20 process, uh, this is one of the, ICANN is, I don't know if it's the only organization, but ICANN definitely has a goal, a CEO goal, which is about WSIS plus 20. So that shows commitment of not only the CEO, but the whole organization to make sure that we pay attention, we raise awareness, we provide, to continue to provide uh, technical neutral information to governments around the world and in the United Nations so that when they go to those negotiations behind closed doors, we hope there will be enough knowledge there so that they are not going to propose stuff which we have seen in the previous uh, discussions, uh, especially in the WSIS plus 10 negotiations in 2015. So a lot of work needs to be done, but uh, we are hopeful that uh, we'll continue to, to do that. Any comments on on that question in the room online? No. Uh, so another question, though, related for me, then related to this one, would be for you guys, the panelists, is to do you think there is? Uh, I mean, we all hear about the proposals for creating a multilateral uh, forum. Uh, there have been conversation here in the hallways whether this multilateral forum that it might be or may not be, we don't know, uh, created next year at the Summit of the Future and the Global, Dig under, and the Global Digital Compact, whether this uh, could mean a replacement for the Internet Governance Forum. On the other hand, we are at the IGF and we heard a lot of public statements in support of the IGF, but I'm just wondering whether any of you want to like maybe even make a guess or, uh, and then we can remind you two years in the, <laughs> Steve is nodding, no, <laughs> want to make, doesn't want to make a guess. Take bets. Uh, we can make <laughs> a little bet, you know, a glass of water or something like that. Any, Edmund? Um, happy to add Edmund here. Um, well, I, I guess uh, this is this is topic that that is a, one of the hot topics around. Uh, you know, as I was discussing with different people here uh, at the IGF, um, I, I think generally, at least, uh, maybe it's because I'm from ICANN and from you know supporting the IGF uh, 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 as it is. Um, uh, 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 that, but I generally I think here that the community thinks that the IGF needs improvement, but uh, the IGF and the uh, the multi-stakeholder model that that it takes uh, actually can work uh, better um, and will work better uh, based on a multi-stakeholder model that can actually bring in different stakeholders. Yesterday I was at the um, 
main session on uh, sustainability and environment, and there's a clear need to bring in um, uh, other stakeholders, uh, which is the, uh, I guess, the benefit of a multi-stakeholder model versus uh, an another type of model, because then the changes might be much harder uh, to, to make. And uh, from that main session, I think the, uh, at least um, my conclusion is that we, we need to take the uh, discussion about um, uh, internet governance in relation to sustainability and environment to the uh, national and regional IGFs uh, which you know then comes back and inform the the global IGF, and again that is the multi-stakeholder model in in you know in uh, uh, in action and uh, how it would work that I think the the IGF can build on and is kind of the right model to 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 build further, and that's sort of what I'm I, at least I, I'm hearing uh, from from the community as well. Thank you. Uh, yes, Danko. Thank you, Vanny. Uh, Danko speaking. So uh, I am happy to take uh, possible criticism that I'm too optimistic here. <laughs> but uh, today is the last day of this great IGF meeting. And uh, I was a MAG member from 2017 until 20. So uh, Paris IGF, Berlin IGF, uh, and a virtual uh, uh, Katowice IGF. And I think, uh, first, uh, I would, I'm very grateful for the Japanese hosts here, but I think this is, this is great IGF. It is, it is getting better every, every, every year. And I think this is actually proof, not only of the success of internet, uh, as I'm often saying, obviously, but the proof that IGF is functioning and it is getting better. So I don't, I see those discussions, um, uh, I see that uh, uh, UN, as the organization of member states, has a certain point of view, but I don't really see the need to, to, to change IGF or to create something in the parallel to it. Uh, we need to discuss, we need to evolve, and we want to strengthen the IGF, but I think this, uh, this here is, is a great success. And I think it should be celebrated by uh, striving to get uh, better and better IGFs, but uh, in using that as uh, uh, leverage to uh, create a better uh, internet and to work on the uh, sustainable development goals. Thank you, Danko. Keith. Okay, thank you, Vanny. Uh, thanks again, Keith Drazik, Verisign. Um, so I'd like to build on a bit of what Danko and Edmund just said. Um, I think as it relates to IGF, uh, Verisign has been a longtime supporter of the IGF uh, as a multi-stakeholder engagement, very important. Um, so I think we think of multi-stakeholder internet governance, there's a macro level, right? There's the big picture where it's very, very important that stakeholders have a voice in the development of policy and the development of government st governance structures. Um, I think that's all very important and critical at a macro level. But I think in order to have the Internet Governance Forum be relevant and to have uh, to encourage participation, and as Danko said, we've seen tremendous participation here at this IGF meeting in Kyoto, um, which I think is really positive. But I think it's important to be able to identify specific issues and specific topics that need focus and that need contribution and need dialogue and discussion. And I'll give you an example just from this week. Um, so the Dynamic Coalition on DNS Issues was originally established, I want to say six years ago, and its focus at that time was on universal acceptance issues, IDNs, but universal acceptance in general. Um, and then during the pandemic, uh, it sort of went dormant. Uh, you know, and obviously there were the challenges of lack of in-person participation, but the, the group sort of went quiet. Um, and we have just re-energized, re-established uh, the dynamic coalition on DNS issues. Um, it's now, you know, we were able to get a dynamic coalition session here in Kyoto. Um, and that session was focused on the governance gaps as it relates to the DNS. Um, as was noted earlier, ICANN's role is you know, very limited. It's limited to primarily a technical function, and it is clearly not uh, in the content arena. 
right? ICANN's bylaws prohibit it from it and its contracted parties and others in various ways from engaging in content moderation. So one of the governance gaps that we've identified is how do we have policy development in a multi-stakeholder way uh, or even just dialogue and development of best practices in a multi-stakeholder way on content-related harms or content-related matters. So we're starting this dialogue in a parallel multi-stakeholder track outside of ICANN, but within the Internet Governance Forum context. This is just beginning. I think there's an opportunity there for a range of views and voices uh, to contribute to that effort. Um, and so, again, just to summarize, macro Internet governance, multi-stakeholder, IGF, really important. But I think the, the micro issues where you get into the, the, the more concrete details will generate more participation, more contribution, and more engagement. Thanks. Thank you. I want to use uh, the fact that we have somebody from DESA here and talk a little, uh, one, one comment on the IGF, um, which is, I mean, we hear a lot about the IGF, it's a place for discussion. Actually, the WISIS Tunis agenda in the paragraphs that establish and define what the IGF is, uh, it actually says that the IGF can provide recommendations on new technologies. So, I mean, I was thinking, uh, listening to the Secretary General in the last few months, he says, you know, we need an AI agency because AI is the you know, dangerous, et cetera, et cetera. This is one thing that the IGF could also do. There could be sessions on AI and there could be some recommendations uh, uh, expressed by the IGF. So there are still unused opportunities of the IGF. I think that we need to go back and reread the document, the WISIS Tunis Agenda and the WISIS Plus 10 Outcome document, and maybe provide some feedback to the governments in New York and our national governments and tell them, hey, you can use the WISIS Plus 20 actually to improve the IGF, and also you can urge the IGF to be more contributing into what uh, we're going to say. I, I, you don't need to comment, but it's, you have the microphone. I think, yeah, I, I do. This is why I mean Guoqiu and Desa, but I think you have pretty much stated the lines. <laughs> uh, and, but I just had to also to, to, to uh, on the record, if you revisit the Secretary General message for the opening of this IGF, I, th I think that that is actually a very uh, uh, a big compliment about the IGF, the, how it has actually demonstrated in the past 18 years of the multi-stakeholder model. The, the question in context is actually whether there need to be a separate body on AI. So right now, right now the approach of the Secretary General is sort of a high-level advisory body. That doesn't mean that there will be a high uh, AI uh, th there's a, there's an advisory board, high level advisory uh, um, advisory to him in giving recommendation. So that does not stop IGF from giving recommendations. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the eight teams of this uh, IGF is on AI. So hopefully we will have significant uh, or, or or good enough key messages um, that will talk about what will be the AI uh, the trends or the recommendations or anything for that matter. Uh, but having said that, uh, I think for the remaining two years, uh, this be, is still a opportunity for the IGF to, to reinvent because that would be also be uh, demonstrative of how during the review in 2025 about what specific uh, impact and that also relate to the future mandate of the IGF. So uh, I, I think it's, it's important, and, and uh, is I, as, a, as a staff member, I, I heard many compliments about the relevance of IGF, and there's no need for other bodies. But I think it's also within this room or this hall, uh, we do have to look at what are the views of those who still think that what are the sort of gaps that IGF has not been able to fulfill. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if there are any comments. Oh. There are no comments online, right? Okay, so, Sally, we are coming to the end of this session. I wanted to see whether you have some final uh, remarks or what you're, uh, what you're thinking about the, this whole discussion that we had here, and then I'll pass it to Tripti for the final comments. Thank you, Benny. Um, I, I want to thank everybody for coming together at this, this, uh, the IGF meeting for having the... Uh, uh, energy, the focus, the commitment and the passion to continue to focus on these critical issues that we've been discussing today and for 
helping I can to continue to raise awareness um, of the issues that are so so important as we move through these next couple of years, uh, which we've been discussing, particularly in the second half of this meeting. So uh, any of you who are coming to Hamburg to our meeting, I look forward to seeing you there, either online or in person. Uh, and in meanwhile, if there is anything that anybody would like to raise with us, with ICANN, uh, that we've discussed this morning, uh, we have plenty of ways of communicating with us. Please do that. And uh, thank you very much for your participation this morning. It's been really a very, very important discussion. Uh, and thank you, Sally, for staying with us. Uh, we understand what the time is uh, in the UK. So thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Tripti? Uh, thank you, Vanny. So, um, thank you, everyone, for the discussion. I, I I was reflecting on how you know I've come to realize that um, ICANN is a synonym for the MSM and the IGF, and so I take that as a compliment that our discussion kept going back to ICANN. I think it's being used more as a model of a multi-stakeholder model that uh, you know it, it's functioning. And um, as you pointed out, Steve, um, you, you you're saying let's not just have a voice, let's be influencers, let's move the needle on issues. And um, so we need greater engagement, uh, just more proaction in how we actually uh, bring about change and effect, effect change. Um, and as you were saying, um, the other gentleman, that oftentimes you know, uh, the solution may exist outside of the perimeters of whatever system we're working within, and that was, you're, you're absolutely right. And what that, to me, the gap that that addresses is that perhaps we don't have everyone inside. We need more stakeholders and we should go seek them. And that is a, a point that has come up in the discussions this week here, which is what's missing at the IGF and who are, who's not, not at the table and let's bring them in. And I think that applies to any model of MSM. And no model is perfect, um, Jonathan, I think, uh, but I think we're doing quite well. And if I could end on one note, which is um, in many ways, this is a democracy, if you will, at a high level of abstraction. This is a democracy where you're trying to bring everyone's um, voice and influence to play. And if we're moving towards ma multilateralism, I'd say, sadly, the old you know, truism that democracy dies in darkness, that is indeed what will happen. You take away some very important players and you begin to create instability and destabilize the system. So on that note, I'd like to say, let's just um, chisel away and make this a better system. Thank you. Thank you, Tripti. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I understand it's the last day, so it's kind of a, you know, you're looking forward to leave the venue. <laughs> but uh, thanks again for coming, and thank you, Vera, for the online support.